These cards are so cool. I found them in the op shop. So that basketball cards, right? I, I did this in a trip to the thrift on Thursday. I got I got 500 basketball cards, 2008, 2009, Upper Deck, Flair, a whole bundle. There's LeBron James in here. There's Michael Jordan. There's so many different cards and I'm a bit overwhelmed. I don't really know what I've got my hands on. Um, we've got 2008, 2009. Uh, these are f uh, Upper Deck MVP cards, some MVP signature cards as well. That's Dwayne Wade. So these are the ultimate victory upper deck 2008, 2009 cards. I think that's Kevin Garnett. Um, these Kobe Bryant's, I know they go for about $20 each at the moment. And there's all the Fleer. They are all the Fleer cards that I've got as well from 2008, 2009. So anyone here in Australia locally that knows where to best go to get these cards graded, um, let me know in the comments below. Shoot me a message on Instagram. Uh, it'd be very, very much appreciated. But um, Oh geez, what a what an awesome find to start the episode. Uh, I haven't sold any yet because I don't know what they're worth, but um, maybe we should get into the sold items because it is a what sold episode. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Big episode today. I'm gonna to take you through 10 of my best sold sales items like I always do. I'm gonna take you through a featured reseller of the week as well. And then we're gonna look at my weekly sales numbers just to let you know how I'm tracking each and every week. Uh, it's been a pretty good week this week. Um, I've had a number of sales come in. The sales figures probably aren't where I'd like them to be just yet, uh, but that's okay. You've got to slowly chip away each and every week, which is what I'm doing. Um, if you're here for the first time, I am a full-time online reseller. I do three videos right here on YouTube talking about it. So it'd be great for anyone out there that is watching this video to give this a quick thumbs up. It's a great way to support the channel. Um, just hitting that like button, it means the absolute world to me. So thank you very much for that. And if you haven't yet subscribed, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button as well. It'd be awesome to have you on board. Um, three videos every single week. Uh, we'll kick things off today with a piece of furniture that I managed to flip on Facebook Marketplace earlier this week. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, first item of the day is this entertainment unit that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace a few days ago. Now, I paid $60 for this one, but again, I've broken a golden rule twice this week now. Um, this one had some orange stains on the top surface, and I took it home, and I thought that if I could put a bit of work into it, I could maybe get them out, but it was not the case. Um, these were unfortunately needed to be listed as damaged, and uh, I didn't think I'd get top dollar for it. Having paid 60 I didn't think there'd be too much profit to be made, and I thought this might just be a bit too much work for what was the result but I've ended up selling it for $145 and it's sold within the space of just five days I've put the runner over the top as you can see in the photos here um, but um, I did still highlight obviously the damage and, and really detailed it in the description but uh, it sold for $145 I've made $85 profit I delivered it locally um, which was only about a 10 minute drive away and uh, and the person loved it so it just goes to show you, even if it isn't in 100% condition, you can still make profit on furniture items out there. So it was actually my only furniture flip of the week. So I was really glad it came through because I've got about four furniture items that are yet to move. It's been a very, very slow week in furniture sales. But um, to get this one done for an 85 profit, not too bad. Next item up are these Guinness World Record books that I picked up in a trip to the thrift a little over a month ago. Now, I bought these all for 50 cents each, so I was only paying $5 for the 10 books, and they were really good, quite, uh, you know, a collector's type item, I guess. It was the years 2007 to 2016, a full decade's worth of Guinness Book of World Records. Now, I went initially at $120 free postage on this listing, and it did sit up for 36 days, and uh, I've ended up selling it for $99 free postage. So the postage, I always knew I was going to get caught out with the postage on this one because the books are quite heavy. But, um, the postage still came to $29. The fees were $12.87. Um, so while I paid $5, when you take out postage and fees, I've profited $52.13 on these Guinness World Record books. And remember, it was just eight. So I've held on to two of them and I'm going to start again. I'm going to find another decade and sell it up again for around the $120. But um, I was happy to take the offer here at $99. Uh, they definitely do sell. There was a lot of interest prior. Um, could have probably held on for the $120. But to take a 52 profit on a set of books, um, not the end of the world. This next item was a really cool pickup as well. Uh, it was the Nike um, sort of wedge sneakers. So these actually had a heel on them. Um, they were quite a high 
quite a high heel female shoe obviously um, now I paid six dollars for these in the op shop uh, quite a unique pair obviously so I had a bit of a look around on eBay to see what the sold comps were for these wedge type uh, Nikes and I ended up getting about well I did I got seventy four dollars and ninety seven cents so the fees were nine dollars seventy five the postage ended up being about ten dollars so I've profited close to fifty dollars forty nine forty two and they sold in the space of just eight days so I haven't seen too many of these wedge type shoes but they were in very good condition and uh, a six dollar find in the op shop was a good one but uh, like I say on this channel all the time on these Sunday episodes I do like to profit about $30 for shoes and uh, so to go ahead and, and profit around 50 for this one this was a, a really good get now another item that featured in a trip to the thrift episode a few days ago was actually 26 days ago now a little uh, under a month it was this Sega uh, Wonderboy 3 the Dragon's Trap uh, Sega game so this one was an interesting one because when I picked it up, uh, the first comp that I saw for this game on eBay was $250 and I thought I'd hit the jackpot. But when I got home and I further looked into it, I realized that it was a silver case that was $250. This one, as you can see here, was a black case. And unfortunately, the black case was worth exactly what I sold it for and that's $40. So unfortunately, I've missed out on about $200 there based on the color of the game, uh, which is very unfortunate. But um, still, I paid $2 for this one bought it in an op shop, uh, the fees were $5.20, the postage was $7.20. So I've profited $25.60 off a very retro Sega game. Um, the cycle obviously of 26 days, so it did move in a pretty quick space of time. But if you do find this game and it is in a silver case, it will go for over $200. Uh, unfortunately on this occasion, not for me. Another pair of shoes for this next item. This was a men's pair. Uh, I believe they were a size 12 from memory. They were a larger shoe. Um, they were the Under Armour Hover. Uh, men's running shoes now these were quite cool they were in very very good condition um, they even had bluetooth capabilities on them as well um, they were paid just five dollars they were an op shop find one of many shoes that i found recently in the op shop i've had a good run um, i've sold these for 55 dollars after a really good clean presented well in photos um, postage was nine dollars eighty because they were a slightly larger uh, pair of shoes i had to put them in a medium satchel um, the fees were seven dollars and fifteen cents and we've worked out to a profit of thirty five dollars uh, roughly for this one so sold within the space of a week uh, a lot of attention around this shoe you can buy the hover under armors in the under armor stores at the moment so they are quite a, a an on-trend um, new type shoe that's out in the market at the moment so that's obviously why there was a bit of attention there but uh, to make $35 for these um, happy days now, one thing that I'll almost always buy when I'm out in the op shops are the footy boots. I talk about them a lot. They are going to be a big thing to purchase for anyone out there that is into reselling because in the next couple of months, uh, we're going to head into the footy season across the board in here in Australia. So I am buying quite a lot of pairs of football boots and they are starting to sell, which is good news. Um, these are a pair of Hyper Venom. Uh, Nike footy boots now uh, again a slightly larger size um, I've gone ahead and bought these for around I think it was $4.75 on average with the haul that I purchased on that day uh, they sold for $49.97 so again $50 for another pair of footy boots, um, postage $7.20, the fees were $6.50 and the profit there of $31.50. So again, look a 12 day sales cycle on this one, they do move quite quick. Uh, if, if you can give them a good clean before you go ahead and list them, that's going to help you with your cycle time. Um, but they are quite an easier shoe to clean, the footy boots. Um, the runners with the sort of the mesh type fabric um, takes a little bit longer to get the dirt out. But this uh, material, this synthetic material with the footy boots, um, they do clean up pretty easily. So um, awesome result there. Got my $31 that I always want to get when I do shoes. And hopefully there's going to be a whole lot more footy boots sold over the next few weeks and months. The next item I've got for you is another pair of shoes. I have done a lot of pairs of shoes this uh, this week, that's for sure. But um, these were ones that I still wanted to put into the episode today because of the initial purchase. Um, I've paid $10 for these. They're the Nike um, Thea's. Um, they're women's shoes. They're very nice women's shoes. There, there was really nothing wrong with these. They were in almost as new condition, uh, to be honest. And they were 10 bucks. And I've always umdenared about what is the most you would pay in an op shop for a pair of shoes. And obviously, I know it all comes down to what the resale value is worth and, and what margin can you get out of it. I understand that. But on the other pairs of shoes that I've sold, I've been able to make over $30 in profit based on the fact that I'm buying them around the $5 price point. 
It's quite interesting though that these have sold for $49.97. And when you take out all your fees and postage like you normally do, because of the $10 purchase, this has dipped down to a profit of $26.27. Um, so it, it, I knew, look, the sales cycle was five days. I knew that these were such good shoes that they would sell quite quickly. Um, I probably should have put them up at around the $60 to $70. But um, working off that th you know, $30 profit, um, by buying them at $10, it has fallen under the $30 profit that I like to get. So. Um, really interesting one. How much do you spend on shoes when you're out in the op shop? What's the most that you would pay? It's sort of a continual debate that I have with myself when I'm out there looking. But um, probably for me to learn off this one is if you are buying them at $10, just list them for 60 or 70 and uh, you'll still make the profit you want. Now, this week on a clothing front, uh, I've had a couple of multiple purchases from the same buyer, uh, which is always obviously a really good result. Um, the first one that I wanted to take you through was a pair of um, Nike athletic department shorts, basically like a pair of cargo shorts. And the other one was uh, the Levi Strauss 568 uh, skinny black jeans as well, both uh, men's size 34 waist uh, or 32 waist actually. Um, so these were bought, uh, the, the, the buyer got in touch with me and said, look, can I buy both items for $50? Um, I said, look, let's do $60 free postage um, and you can have it. And he said, yep, that sounds good. So we've gone ahead and we've done the deal. $60 was the result of it. Um, the jeans and the shorts, a two item situation. I've paid $12 for a combined total of the two items of clothing. Um, I think one was five for the shorts, the jeans were $7 in the op shop, which I thought was pretty good for a pair of Levi's. Um, and I've sold them for 60. So when you take out 720 uh, in, in shipping and the fees of $7.80, been able to profit $33. Um, the sales cycle for the jeans, the the five, six, eights, they sold in just three days. Um, probably could have got a few more dollars for them. But because this guy was buying two items, I thought just, just go ahead and do it for 60. Um, the shorts themselves, uh, they were 21 days for a sales cycle. So look, I've, I've paid 12. Some guy offers, offers me $60. I've got so many clothing items here. I just thought I had to take this one. Um, just a really good result when you can bundle up your items. Uh, you get obviously more of a more of a sale price. So $33 profit, two items of clothing, works out to about $16 um, per item. That's okay. I'm happy to take it. Sales cycle pretty quick too. Now this next one is a game that I do love to find and I've actually bought this one through a bundle um, with a bunch of other games. I bought an Xbox console. I think it had about 15 games with it. This was one of them. It was the Simpsons hit and run game. Um, now this game, the minute you find it, the minute it sells, basically. It's a very fast mover. This one sold for me in the space of just three days. Um, I don't class a purchase price to it because it is part of a bundled pack. Um, I've got all the other games. I think five games I've listed individually. The other 10 games I've bundled with the console. So that tends to be the way I do uh, console purchasing off Facebook Marketplace. I just pick out the good games, sell those individually like this one, and then use the other games that aren't worth very much to overall make the console a better sale price. So uh, these have sold for $42.20 uh, for this Simpsons game. The fees were $5.50, postage was $7.20, so I've profited. Wow, wait, I've put the wrong price there. $59.21 is incorrect. Um, what is it? I don't know, you'll have to work it out. Around about 30 bucks for this one um, and it sold in just three days. Another bundled purchase off eBay here with these Nike Tour Performance Golf Polo shirts. Now I bought these in a trip to the thrift um, not too long ago. I think it was last week's episode. I've paid $5 each for these and I always knew that they would be a fast mover. They're very, very good condition polo shirts. They never really sort of fade and, and get out of date. Um, these ones sold for $55.15 uh, for the two of them. Um, so the fees were $7, postage was $7. The profit was $30, but they moved within the space of just five days. So um, negotiated a deal with this guy because I initially had them up for I think $30 each um, for 60 bucks and then we've dropped it down to 55. So um, to get the deal done, I'm pretty happy um, to make $30 on two pairs of polo shirts just found in the thrift store um, in, a, in the space of a week it is very, very good. So um, do look out for them. The Tour Performance Golf polo shirts, uh, they always, always sell really quickly. So they are my best 10 sold sales items of the week, guys. Uh, like I said, there are a few shoes in there, but um, I think they are a pretty consistent reselling item for anybody that's just trying to start out in the field of reselling is to just get into the shoes, make a beeline, um, buy them for around $5. You can always make a few dollars from them and they're generally a pretty consistent seller. But uh, I did want to get into the featured reseller of the week as well. And our featured reseller for this week is Ebony Waru. And I hopefully I've got the pronunciation of that last name correct, Ebony. But um, Ebony has only just 
just recently stumbled across my channel on YouTube and I think that's awesome. I love meeting people that are just joining for the very, very first time. And she's watched a lot of my recent episodes, uh, which is awesome. And she's commented on every single one. I got flooded with inquiries um, and, and comments. Uh, from Ebony Waru's account. So I know that you've been watching them all, Ebony, and I do very much appreciate that. Um, she did let me know in one of the recent What Sold videos that uh, she has sold a Nintendo DS bundle, and I'll, I'll put it up here for you to have a look at. She sold it for $80, but uh, what I will say here is she is a very inexperienced uh, new reseller. She's trying to learn the ropes. She's trying to gather as much information as possible, and um, that's where she stumbled across my channel, and um, I, just, I just love that because that's why I'm trying to do these videos is to help people out there that are brand new to reselling and they want to just get started. Um, so she's trying to learn as much as she can. She sold this for $80 on Facebook Marketplace. Um, so there were no fees. She told me that she didn't do any research into knowing how much these were actually worth. Um, she's just kind of guesstimated an $80 figure here. And to be honest, she's she's pretty close. I, I had a quick look on eBay for the sold comps. And um, I, I think with the fact that there are no fees on Facebook Marketplace, this has worked out to be a pretty good sale. Um, she hasn't bought them. She's done what she should do as a beginning reseller and she's just looked around her own home. Um, she's found these lying around the house that no longer get used and uh, she's just put them up on the Facebook marketplace and she's made herself $80. So um, I really do love that. I love the fact that she's obviously found the channel as an inexperienced reseller. She wants to learn more and I want to highlight people like that. Um, it's a great way to make some money. She's obviously doing that very, very well. No doubt she's got a few more items that are selling out of her own home that she's just stumbled across. Um, so I thought in today's episode, I would highlight you, Ebony, um, for doing the right thing and learning as much as you can and making a few dollars on the side. So uh, well done. Nintendo DS, $80 for two of them. Not a bad result. Well, well done. All right, so it's time to have a quick look at the weekly sales figures for me this week. And if we pull the grid up, you will see that I have sold 30 items this week. Now, that's pretty much back to my average sort of a number. I, when I'm having a relatively okay week, it is usually around that 30 items. Uh, the cost of goods was $185.45. Now, that's a whole lot less than what it normally is. And I think that's pretty much due to the fact that I haven't sold as much furniture this week. Um, total sales is $1,051.23 this week. Um, and the profit there of $865 has resulted in a profit margin of 82%. So, Look, this week has certainly been a really interesting week because um, more or less since the start of the year, the last 17 days, I've really been trying to buy and source more items. Um, still really high quality, still items that I believe will sell well, um, but I've really tried to increase the number of items that I'm buying. And um, so far, the results haven't really uh, come through on the sales front. Um, I'm listing 15 items every single day, and I've done that consecutively for the last two weeks. I understand that that sort of consecutive consistency would need to continue for a few more weeks to start regularly seeing sales come through. Um, but yeah, to, to only hit the $1,000 and to have done all that work over the last couple of weeks um, is a little bit disappointing. But um, I know that if I can sort of just stick to the plan, the sales will come in a few weeks time and I hope that I can bring you those numbers. But um Part of this channel is documenting the good weeks and the not so good weeks. I would probably class this as a not so good week. Still $1,000 is great, but to live on, it's it's certainly not enough. So I've really got to pick it up and uh, try and sell a few more items. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not disappointed, but uh, I, I still know there's a whole lot more work left to do. So um, consistent listing will be the plan, 15 every single day, source more items, try and hit 400 every single month is the plan from here on in. And uh, so, weeks, so far, I'm just only two weeks in. So um, I'm really only just starting the new process and I'm probably looking for the results a little bit earlier um, than, uh, than what I need to be. So um, that's sort of where it's at anyway uh, for this week, $865. It is midday Sunday. So I'm hoping that there's a few afternoon and evening sales that do come through and we can push that profit to over $1,000. Um, that would be awesome. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep plugging away and hopefully over the next few weeks, we can, uh, we can bring you some really good numbers. But um, hopefully you've had a really good week out there. Uh, let me know for the featured reseller of the week what your best sold sales item was in the comments below. I do love to hear it and I will pick out uh, one that I would like to have a bit of a chat about. So um, do that. Obviously, always leave a like as well if you've enjoyed the episode by any means. And uh, until next week's episode, guys, we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in to this one.